Hi, welcome back. Today we will have a look how we can convert a low resolution logo bitmap to a vector curve by using Affinity Photo or Designer and the open source program Inkscape. So let's go. Here I have loaded a low resolution bitmap with a sample logo. As you can see, the quality is miserable. It contains a lot of JPEG artifacts and the resolution is not ideal, around 500 pixels wide. In order to convert this to a vector, I will be using Inkscape. If you're not using it, I would definitely advise to use it. It works on any platform and has some tools we don't have in Affinity Suite of products, like tracing a bitmap to a vector curve. Let me switch to Inkscape. I had already loaded the low resolution logo in Inkscape. We can now trace this image by selecting it and then use the path trace bitmap menu. In the dialog, make sure auto trace method is selected and press OK. This will trace the image. The OK button will not close the dialog. Press the X button on top to close it. As you can see, the trace is everything but perfect. Considering the low quality of the bitmap, it is actually not that bad. So, how can we get better results? The only good way of getting good results for tracing is making sure the source image is of good quality. Let's switch back to Affinity and apply some tricks to increase the quality of the low resolution bitmap. First thing I will do is to resize the document to a higher resolution from the document resize menu item. Let's make it 3000 pixels wide. Because there is no way to see if something has changed, let me check in the transform panel to see the image has been resized. It has indeed been resized to 3000 pixels. Nice. Let me zoom in. And one thing you notice is that everything is kind of blurry. That is because of the resize. What we actually want is to have sharp edges, which will work better with the trace bitmap we will be using later in Inkscape. Before we get to sharpening the edges, let's convert this to black and white. By adjusting the color sliders, we need to get a contrasty image as much as possible without too much artifacts. Next, I will apply a curves layer to darken and remove the artifacts. With this step, we now have a good base for sharpening the edges. To make things easy for Affinity, let's do a merge visible so we have a new working layer and group the previous layers and hide them. The funny thing right now is that we need to blur the image in order to sharpen it. So I will add a Gaussian blur filter. The idea is to blur so much that the outline now looks smooth or straight. The next step is to add a curves layer to make the outline sharp by bringing the shadows and the highlights closer to each other. Amazing, look how sharp it is now. Pretty cool. Sometimes it is possible by using this method that the logo becomes a bit fatter. In this case, you can add a maximum filter. This will allow to make the artwork slimmer. In this example, it's not really needed. You can keep it as is and use this for tracing. If you want the original colors back, before I continue, let me copy the color from the original layer first. If we now add the HSL, and set the luminosity to 50%, the image will be 50% gray. Why 50% gray? 
because I am now going to add a circle layer and put its blend mode to overlay. This will color the layer. If I make the blue circle a child of our layer, it will be automatically clipped. I will apply the same steps for the text color. Ok, I think we're done now. Let me export this as a PNG so I can import it in Inkscape. Let me switch to Inkscape and close the low resolution image which was still open. Now time to open the new PNG we just created. Let's zoom in. And you can immediately see the image is much sharper. I wonder how the tracing will be right now. From the path menu, let's invoke the trace bitmap menu again. That looks actually really good. No strange tracing issues. If we export it now as an SVG, we have successfully traced and saved it as a vector. Let me quickly load the two SVGs, the one from the high resolution and the one from the low resolution in Affinity and put them side by side so we can compare them. If we zoom in you can see what a huge difference it makes. I hope you liked this tutorial and thanks for watching.